you Boomer shut Joe. the fuck up, I tell oh, you. Oh, big man, come and say that right here. Come and say it right where? Well, first of all, I'm not Sam Harris, and I disagree with Sam on a number of things. I'm also not Christopher Hitchens, and I think he was monumentally wrong about war. And while I served in the military for eight years, I have massive objections to what our Christian-led country did to try to put democracy everywhere. They fucked the world up, and what they did was they helped create more people who hate this country and more people who are now compelled to become jihadis than to become secularists, because the United States is not secular humanism in action. And in just the same way that he represented the United States uh, revolution as if it was the principle of secular humanism, secular humanism didn't exist until 1963 with the first humanist manifesto. You don't get to saddle everything that isn't Islam under secular humanism. And as secular humanists are here in the United States, fighting for equality and freedom that allows you to be a Muslim and, my, and Mike to be a Christian and me to be an atheist. It wasn't secular humanism that sent people out and tried to conquer Iraq. And it wasn't me, so don't fucking saddle me with your delusion of what you think I believe. Let's address what I actually think and say like I've done with you. Yeah, very convenient. You can mention 9-11. You can mention all kinds of terrorist attacks to attack my position and attack Islam. Islam condemns terrorism and attacks killing civilians uh, for the purposes of war. So you can saddle me with that. No problem. You can just have a cute little hashtag. I didn't. Uh, boomer joke about it. But when I, boomer, point out, when I point out all of these... Well, you don't age well, my friend. Oh. So when you, but when I talk about all of the tens of millions Classy killed, the end. tens of millions that are killed by your ideology, secular humanism not killed is by a my ideology. No, I know killed by secular my ideology. Humanism, secular Nobody's humanism, been killed, humanism, secular killed by humanism, my ideology. Nobody's been killed by my. Yeah, deny it. Say okay, it. We heard it. We heard. Has it. anybody been killed yes, because of my? Tens you're of a liar. millions. Okay, fine. You are a liar. But tens of millions. Your hands are bloody with the my blood of millions. My hands are not bloody. And yes, they're they also are. not. You literally went to children. war. Like you're the last person. You the... come on, man. Look at this. Yeah, look at this. I'm sorry right. you have to yeah, look up to your words. whines about being classy. Look at that. I call him a boomer. It is classy. Is defending kids classy? Yeah. I think so. Chill, man. Chill. 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 What's that? You have no real argument. You have no real. I argument. have no real argument. Other the guy than who presented that's no not the real debate. argument. Oh, all you night f is saying this I don't and you f that. You want to f that. All I've that's done is all curse. your argumentation is about. All based I've done on. is curse, James. It's all, amazing. All you've done is oh, that's not the debate topic. Oh, where's the scientific evidence? Sorry, oh, you, you want to on the debate topic? You want to f kids? Dur. That's the whole debate. Not my fault. You're a grown up. <laughs> you can say fuck. It's okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, so secular humanism is a variant of liberalism. All of the values that you claim as a secular humanist that you cited in your opening statement were also the values that were cited as the justification for the invasion of Iraq, sanctions of many Muslim countries around the world, the invasion of Afghanistan. Those secular values were cited as the justification. That's why they call it Operation Iraqi Freedom. That's not a coincidence. Now, you want to wash your hands of that very conveniently, that's fine. I'm not saying you personally supported those wars. My argument is that your ideology was the basis as a justification for those wars and that invasion. I'll ask you a very simple question. Do you believe in international law based on secular humanism? Not the manifesto that no one knows about and no one has read, but the secular humanism, the idea of separation of church and state, individual happiness, equality, etc., those values that I focused on in my opening, do you think that should be the basis of international law? And should there be consequences for violating international law? Didn't I make a very express thing in my opening about the separation of church and state and how I would be fine, and I'm a secular humanist, and I would be fine with a secular state, but not a secular humanist state. Didn't I make that clear? Yeah. I thought so. Yeah, so secular. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, that's exactly so, why I'm attacking. So you're equating secular with secular humanism. And so anything that's secular is bad, right? No, I said that secular humanism is a sub-ideology of liberalism. The values in liberalism include value for freedom, value for equality, maximizing so freedom, freedom and equality. 
No, I say that should be balanced by other concerns like marriage, family, community. I don't I don't know that marriage, marriage and community are necessarily the parts, but I'm not opposed to either one of them. But, but that's if, the, but, that's but the but conflict. You, Sometimes but marriage. But if you're going to but if you're going to but if you're going to. We both want freedom and you can't just cite, well, freedom is the problem. That's not what I said. Freedom. I said freedom Liberal. is a value. Freedom is a value, but it's it should not be. Uh, the only value that I didn't we maximize. Say it was. Okay, so How what other value? Straw man me. So what other value? So for example, in marriage, you Consent. have certain obligations. You have when you sign a marriage contract. Traditionally, that requires uh, giving up certain rights, giving up certain duties. If a person just wants to opt out of that because they're just not happy with a marriage anymore, uh, should That's they be able divorce? to do that? Should divorce be allowed? Yes, I'm in favor of divorce. I'm actually divorced. No fault divorce. Well, I, no fault divorce gets more into politics and financing, um, but I so I don't know necessarily which version of divorce is better. But since I'm still really good friends with my ex-wife, I should probably message her and see if she's okay with the way we got divorced. We don't seem to have a problem with it. Or for example, like within marriage, you're not allowed to sleep with whoever you want, right? You my wife was allowed to sleep with whoever she wanted while we were together. But was, is that good? Is that a good thing? Yeah. Did that that help preserve your marriage? Yeah. For most people, it doesn't because when you, when a spouse I would, cheats, I wouldn't think for so. most people, it's not cheating. Yes, when for okay, call it whatever you want. But when no, a spouse is involved with other people, that will biologically reduce the attraction that the male feels for his spouse. And that that, that is that is part of the reason why marriage customs throughout the world involve fidelity. Yeah, you have to be uh, faithful to your spouse. That's part of being in a marriage. So if you want to preserve marriage, you have to restrict someone's freedom to sleep with whoever they want. If you say no, 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 freedom is most important. They should be able to sleep with whoever they want. That undermines the institution of marriage. Why? Because there's this biological attachment that's destroyed when your spouse sleeps with other people. Yeah. So um, this notion that. I have no problem with marriage. I have no problem with people being in monogamous, committed re relationships. I'm in one now, but and I've been in one before. But the notion that your marriage is right for everybody else is problematic. There are plenty of people who have marriages that are different. There are sometimes two men who get married, and it works out. Two women get married, and it works out. Evidently, there's some polygamists that that do it, and it works out. I don't. I don't get it because it's not me. It's not anything that. I have one to participate in. Well, see, but the whole premise was, do you but, value marriage? Not you're okay but, with marriage. Because if you value something, then what kind of policies would you put in place to preserve that institution? I don't, I think that, it, that an institution that has to be preserved through policy probably isn't nearly as valuable as you think it is. Okay, then what about the policies for scientific education? Like, what if there are countries that are like, we don't need any scientific education. There's only religious education. And actually, we're not going to educate most of the population. Would you have a problem with that? Should yeah. there be a policy in place that, no, every country has to implement this type of educational model? I don't think I get to decide what, what model an, another country does, but I can certainly speak out about how they may be harming or depriving their citizens of a robust education by denying it. I would prefer that they permit it and then allow freedom. That's the thing. That's the thing with freedom. If you want to say, oh, we should deny these, this type of education because we want to preserve this particular society, that's a problem. That's the problem that you built your entire um, uh, metaphor around, is there are freedoms that you don't want to allow because you're terrified of what will happen in the world if you allow them. I, I, you don't get to decide for the world. And that's why secular humanism is better than your version of Islam. Because you get to, you get to, mind, to you get to keep thinking this and living the life that you and whoever you convince to actually be with you want to live within reason until they come in conflict. And then somebody's got to step in. So is there any obligation for children to go to school? I, I am a fan of providing required public education. So it's required. So you, you're you a fan of yes. imposing without a child's consent that they be placed into schooling. I'm a, so where, where I'm they an learn, education where they, rapist. Where they learn. Yeah, so you don't believe in consent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, laugh it up, you. So 
three hundred pound gorilla. Here's the back thing there. that Daniel doesn't seem to understand. So, so yeah, yeah, here's the thing that whenever Daniel you get caught on uh, that inconsistency, you make a joke here's, or you blast the f word. Whenever you're caught out on an inconsistency, caught in inconsistency, you just blurt out the f word. You make time, a joke for your plant to laugh every at. Every time like I have a good point that he knows whenever is coming, you don't have an answer, talk over me. Whenever you don't have an answer, you have to make a dumb joke. I have an answer. If you shut the fuck up, I tell you. Oh, big man, come and say that right here. Come and say it right where. Here. All right. Yes. I'm happy to use your class. Relax. Class. Relax. Don't say anything. I'm not violent. Go ahead. Gentlemen, sit down. You're so loud. I do it. All right. I'm saying, just, I have an answer. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. I'll sit down. You said that you come over there and say it. I'm yeah. not violent. I would never do anything. You can't violent. respond to any point. You just make I, a joke. I okay? can't respond to any so point. So you do you believe in schooling up. rape. So you believe in. Would you? Do you want an educational rape? Pretending that I don't. You're a believer in educational rape. Okay. You don't want an answer. I bet your boyfriend finds you really. He doesn't want an answer. He doesn't want an answer. He'd rather pretend I don't have. You believe you're a fan of educational rape. Do you want an answer, or are you going to be pretending I don't have one? Because I fucking got one. You just, you said it. You're, you made a joke, but that's the reality. You're an, you're a fan of forcing children without consent to go into schools where they will be subjected to a scientific worldview that will affect their entire lives at the deepest level. Uh, you have you have yeah, no see, problem with the lack of consent in that situation. How terrified he is of my answer. And he yeah. wants to prop up his straw man again about what I'm actually saying. Yeah. Here's the thing that Dan doesn't understand about consent and about parenthood. Parents don't own their children. You don't. You are the caretakers of those children. You are instilled with a responsibility to raise responsible members of society and to teach them the minimal things that they will need to carry on a productive life when you're not around. One of the ways that we do that is through a tax-supported public school system because parents are not equipped to work multiple jobs and teach their kids quite often. Some of them aren't qualified to teach their kids at all. And so we come up with a standardized curricula that we put in public schools, which represents in some cases, at least the bare minimum of reading, writing, arithmetic, things like civics and stuff like that, because those are the things that kids are gonna need to know when they come to be responsible adults, when it's time for them to vote, when it's time for them to decide if they're gonna join the military, when it's time for them to choose for themselves as an act of freedom, what religion, if any, they wish to follow. That is why I'm not only a fan of public education, I'm not only a fan of compelled public education, I think that raising the next generation of kids to understand how the world around them works so that they can function well within it is a moral duty. There's your answer. Yeah, so you're a fan of educational rape. Basically, you believe that you should compel children to go into these school systems where they're taught your atheistic standards of scientific evidence, the only things that are true that? that can be scientifically proven. Uh, that is justifying atheism. You're indoctrinating children with atheism within those school systems because you're teaching a scientific worldview. There is no choice that parents should have in that. There's no choice on the on the part of parents. That system is imposed. You're, you have no choice as a parent in certain countries. In the U.S., we still have homeschooling options, but they're fighting to liberal, secular humanists are fighting to actually destroy that option. You go to a country like Germany, you go to a country like Sweden, Bastions of secular humanism. They also have banned homeschooling. You have to put your children into these secular schools where atheism is the uh, ground, ground assumption. Uh, not Islam, not Christianity, not Buddhism, not Hinduism. Atheism. So this is non-consensual. It is uh, quite violent because if you don't send your children to school, the police will come and bust down your door and take your children by force. And this is what has been happening to Christians and Muslims in Sweden. It's a uh, quite a heart-wrenching sight to see the police bust down the door of Muslims and take children in the name of secular humanism. You are not putting your children in schools, therefore we are going to take your children away. This is the reality of secular humanism. Yeah, go ahead and wipe your hands. Oh, that's not literally me. But you said you're a fan of compelled education. So you're an, a fan of these types of uh, policies. Yep. If you enjoyed that especially juicy clip, don't forget to hit subscribe so the algorithm knows what to serve you more of.